Welcome to another episode of Keys to the Kingdom streaming broadcast, our, th- our Tuesday night Bible study, praise God, hosted uh, by Everlasting Gospel Kingdom Ministries in Columbia, South Carolina, and by um, myself, your, your apostle Michael E. Snooks. We praise God for a, a, an awesome day that we've been having in him, and just a, a blessed time that he's uh, been bringing us through so early in the week. And for the things that he's showing us in our prayer time and in our study time, uh, the rep, the the uh, relationship uh, of uh, his person and his presence walking with us uh, in this present life, speaking into our spirits and uh, showing us the the frequency in the word of God that we can kind of tap into and thereby, and thereby walk with God. It's just been an exciting time, and, and I, I know it's an exciting time to come. God is on the move. God is doing something, and it is a marvelous time to be alive in Jesus' name. I know someone will say, well, Apostle, there's so many bad things that's going on in the world. It's not our jobs, praise God, to uh, concentrate and focus on the bad things. We've got to see God in the middle of all of these things, and then we've got to be able to say, God, what are you saying to our generation? So let's let's open up with a word of prayer, and after we open up with this word of prayer, we'll move straight into the word of God for this evening. We're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit again, our help, praise God, the help that we stand in need of, the blessing that we stand in need of. I know some people say, nope, in God we trust, talking about the dollar bill. The dollar bill is our help in these days. Yes, the dollar bill can do many, many, many things, but it cannot uh, cannot outdo or overdo or uh, uh, even match what the spirit of the living God can do. So we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit again. We talked about about, uh, 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 in times past about how he's the promise that God made to us. And we're going to jump straight into it (laughs) after we pray. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for promising. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the one that you've called the Holy Spirit that we, that you that that we, that has come to us. And the scripture says uh, you, you call Jesus up and in an ascension. Uh, uh, but then you said you, you, the scriptures promises that you would not leave us comfortless. So you would not leave us without uh, an aid, without a teacher, without a, a, a power source, an instructor, without a without one who who would be wisdom for us without one who would be supernatural power for us that could meet us in every condition and every situation that we would find ourselves in. We thank you for this one that we call the Ruach HaKodesh. And he is in modern, plain, everyday language, which is our everyday language. Uh, English, he is the Holy Spirit of God. And so on this day, this evening, dear God, bless somebody, heal somebody, deliver somebody, help somebody, meet them where they're at, meet us where we're at, and then God, uh, 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 work a work in their life where they will in no wise uh, 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 not know that they have had uh, a, a time where they have met together with you. Dear God, bless me, your servant. Let the spirit of prophecy, tongues, interpretation, uh, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, discerning of spirits, faith, special faith, and and uh, miracles and healings, uh, visions and dreams. Let all those things be upon me, dear God, that I might be a benefit and a blessing to your people. Dear God, remember your people today. Bless so that they may be blessed. Dear God, here I am. Make me a blessing that I might be a blessing. Holy Spirit, I yield and we surrender ourselves to you. All of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our might and strength. Do special things today, dear Lord. And we'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, once again, praise the Lord. Uh, it's an exciting time, praise God. Uh, 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 I, I tell you, the more we get to uh, uh, know the Holy Spirit and the more we get to uh, 
uh, uh, see him in the word and, 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 and have some inklings or understandings about what it is that he is uh, presently saying to us through the scripture, what it is that he is presently uh, uh, attempting to make us aware of. Once these things began to take place in us, our faith begins to spring forth in a greater, greater capacity. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, now uh, 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 there's words that we can hear in the, in the Bible that uh, will not necessarily uh, 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 bring faith to us, praise God. For instance, there's a scripture that says, and Judas went out and hanged himself. And we know that that comes, comes from that the scenario when he uh, sold Jesus out for the 30 pieces of silver, uh, the spirit of grief and burden and all those things came on him and he went out and hanged himself but just listen that is the word of god but there is no faith for us to withdraw out of it uh, uh, from that word faith comes by a rhema word faith comes by a word in due season faith comes by uh, a word that you can uh, 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 come to the place of, of coming to an understanding and seeing how it, it can be applicable in your life. Faith comes by a kingdom word that, that releases to you principles and the keys of the operation of the kingdom of God in the kingdom of the world. Uh, in all humanity, all of us are designed to make to, 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 to do it the same way. Nobody's uh, uh, exempt. We're all designed to do it the same way. Now, uh, somebody might uh, 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 say, no, uh, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it that way. And you might say that said, uh, because I believe I, I, I can do it my way and it would, life will still work. Listen, we all have two eyes, two ears, two holes in our nose here, and we all have one mouth, praise God, two arms, uh, two lobes to the lungs, two lobes to the heart, two, two to the kidneys and, and, the, and liver and, 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 and legs and so forth and so on. We all have these, the, the same thing, making us into a uh, 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 that which God meant for us to be. And uh, 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 so if we decided that, you know what, I think I want to have three arms. I think I'm going to have three eyes. I think I'm going to have three ears. You know, we, we it, 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 you might do that. You might somehow can tap into it, get something put, you know, maybe an ear put here or something like that. You might can do that, but uh, 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 it's not the norm for our, uh, 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 our makeup. And there's principles of the kingdom of God where, whereby certain things work this way. Uh, we, we're not looking, uh, that the brother Elon Musk, uh, in, that's into the science of maybe one day doing travel from the, this earth. He's not looking for a planet that doesn't, uh, offer us, uh, uh, maybe oxy oxygen capabilities or, or if it doesn't have oxygen there, uh, somehow uh, the capacity, to, the capabilities of, of human beings interacting with oxygen in some way uh, on, those, on those given planets uh, is what's in his mind because he knows that all human beings operate in the same way. And all of the principles that govern our operation, oxygen, uh, 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 lungs, heart, blood, it works the same way in all of us. And, and uh, uh, we're writing a book now about prayer and how the prayer was made for everybody. Whether we choose to do it, choose to do it, or, or choose not to do it, it was made for everybody. Now we're going to continue to talk about the Holy Spirit. We were talking about him last week, last program on Sunday. We talked about receiving him, receiving him. We gave a, a power. Uh, uh, what I saw was a powerful 
uh, understanding of, 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 of the promise of the Father in Acts chapter 2 and verse 17, where God says, and in those days, in certain days, I will pour out my spirit upon all, upon all flesh. And we studied there and we, 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 uh, we understood that the promise of God was to pour out his spirit to humanity. Jesus came as a, the helper of God. Jesus came as the helping hands of God. Jesus came uh, to bring us back into a relationship that we had lost. And what do I mean by that? Jesus uh, uh, came to, to undo everything that, that the negative had done. And what that means is that uh, 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 the, 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 the powers uh, 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 that be had gotten a, a hold of humanity because we had gotten plugged in or caught into the negative. God told the human being, this is how the kingdom works. This is how things work. This is how the creation works. And human beings tried to make it work in another way. And, and they didn't. we didn't know what we were doing. And what we did was we ended up opening up a portal, opening up a door uh, uh, to the operation uh, uh, in, in, in a great capacity uh, where the negative uh, was just as, as, as strong as the positive or the negative became even more powerful uh, than the positive. And, and therefore, therefore, and I'm talking in, 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 in I'm not using the, 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 the uh, biblical expressions like the thou in, in King James, but I'm giving you the basic understanding of what took place. These things, the negative took over and then the, the, the mankind be, uh, came under the power of the negative. So he, here we have, instead of uh, uh, the power of God ruling in us uh, from the basis of love and, and those things, uh, now the power of the negative then began to rule in us. And the, the, whatever the flesh told you to do, instead of our heart operating in love and uh, our, our, our spirits and souls uh, operating in gentleness and kindness and love uh, to hum each other, it began to operate in, in selfishness and lust. And we we begin to uh, 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 um, be our worst enemies against each other. And so Jesus comes to, 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 to change that. Jesus comes as a miracle of God, a miracle man of God placed in the earth so to get us to get us to um, uh, 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 understand uh, how to please God, but also how to live uh, successfully amongst one another. And so, but, but the Bible says that Jesus has, has gotten to come as a man. You see, it wasn't an angel that got defeated uh, when it comes down to humanity. It was people. Adam and Eve were people and they got defeated. They got overthrown. It was people that gave away their birthright. It was people that gave away their, uh, 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 that which God meant for them to have, the blessing. It was people that did that. And God didn't send an angel to win what people had lost. God sent uh, uh, God sent a man in Jesus Christ. Now the man had bypassed uh, the, the, the negative that had come into all man, all men. This man, Jesus, had to bypass that. He had to, and the Bible, that's what the Bible means when it says he's the Lamb of God or he's the, he's the one without sin. He couldn't have that same negative nature in him to be able to stand in, in in our place and win victory for us. Thus, the scripture teaches that that Jesus came just like the men, just like man came, and 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 where man lost a victory, where man lost in relationship with God, Jesus came as a man, and he was going to win back the victory that we lost. As a man, a man had to come back and win it back. Then it would be a victory that would be offered to all men. Are you seeing it? It had to be a man that, that because a man had lost it. And it was a man that was given the blessing, a man that was given the, 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 the dominion and man had given it up. It, it had to be a man to come back and to get it again. Now, when this man, Jesus, got the victory for us again, uh, 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 the, the Bible says he ascended up into the heavens. Now, now when the Bible says that he ascended up in the heavens, 
Uh, uh, God says, look, I, I, I've, I've done this part of, uh, I've done a part of what I'm going to do in full restoration of you. I've done a part of what I'm going to do. What I've done is I've, I've sent Jesus <clears throat> And in sending Jesus, uh, uh, and in sending Jesus, now I'm gonna uh, uh, I'm gonna cause him to come up into the heavens, and, and I'm gonna pour out the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna pour out a spirit. In other words, I'm gonna call Jesus to come up before me and to offer up Himself to me because uh, uh, for you. I'm gonna offer up. Um, he's gonna offer up Himself for you. And when He offers offers up Himself for you, He says. Then I'm going to send his spirit back on the church. And as I send his spirit, as I send the Holy Spirit back on the church, uh, uh, that spirit of uh, spirit of God is going to now be, even though Jesus, who was the helper, Jesus, who was the, the, the blessing, Jesus, who was the one who gave, who granted us great victory. He says, he says, I'm going to send Jesus back. I'm going to send him back. And as I send him, as I send him back, I'm going to cause him. Uh, well, wait, 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 wait. No, he's, the Jesus went up into the heavens, but he says, uh, uh, but I'm going to send one back. And the one I send back is going to be the spirit of Jesus Christ. And, and as he comes, he's now going to be the help that Jesus was when he walked the earth. He's going to be the, 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 the benefit. He's going to be the glorious one. He's going to be the, 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 the armored one. He's going to be the one that is a, a mag mag magnificent and splendid. Linda. He's going to be the one. There's going to be one that's going to come back. That's going to not just teach you everything that Jesus was teaching you while he was here, but he's going to begin to manifest. Some, he's going to come down. I'm going to make him available to everyone that receives him. I'm going to make him available to everyone that can believe. And so the Holy Spirit was sent to us. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Remember the objective of God. God is looking to bring all human beings back into right relationship, uh, alignment with himself and alignment with the, the kingdom, alignment with the way things work in the earth, alignment with the way things work uh, and between human beings, alignment with the way the the, uh, the kingdom of God interfaces with the kingdoms of this world and and in the earth, and this is the, the the will of God. So the Spirit of God comes up when He's been released and sent to us. Now He doesn't just come on us in the flesh when He first comes. <laughs> Because uh, if he comes on us in the flesh and just start forcing and making us to do this, uh, making us to do the right thing, uh, making us to do uh, good, uh, making us to love each other, making us to not to steal, making us not to kill, making us not to be adulterers. Uh, if he comes upon us like that, then we would be no more than robots. So he sends the Holy Ghost, but the, the, the objective of his first sending of the Holy Ghost is that the spirit would come inside of humanity and the spirit would begin to teach humanity about his own human spirit and teach humanity about the, the, the about the spirit which is of God which is a power source that can help him uh, uh, help him to bear witness of the of the graciousness and the glory of what it is to be a human <laughs> So the spirit comes on us, but he's not given initially for us to begin to do exploits in the flesh, though the, an, understand, an understanding of, of his ability and power within us, though he will, prof, he will prophetically move in giftings through us at the first coming. It's not, it's not at that time that he's restoring every human being back to this mature level. It's not at that time that that's taking place. He pours the Spirit of God down on the inside of us. Now, this is important because after he pours the Spirit down on the inside of us, then the Bible says, but that's only the first part. The inside pouring of the Spirit is only the first part. God says, I can't cause you to walk 
in the glory that Jesus walked in. Now, some walked in the glory that Jesus walked in, but it was only because the gift of the Holy Spirit was prophetically declaring uh, uh, the validity of the first uh, part of the outflowing. It wasn't because mankind had, 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 had moved into perfection yet. Listen, you can, you can have the gift of the Holy Spirit walk work through you and still not be in perfection yet. We see numerous uh, cases in the scripture. Moses uh, in the Old Testament had just uh, raised his rod and moved out in the Red Sea open, had walked with God, talked with God, had to put a veil over his face because the glory of God showed. Moses was a mighty man of God, but yet he got into the wilderness uh, and what God told him to do uh, in terms of uh, 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 obedience, uh, he did just the opposite of what God told See, you can have the gifts uh, working through you, but not necessarily yet be perfect. Samson had the glory of God on his life to be a judge in Israel. And as he uh, as he moved, uh, people uh, he was going to be responsible for ter- for, for for bringing uh, the enemies of the nation in 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 line to the extent that the people would operate in greater freedoms and so forth. But we know the story of Samson and Delilah. Yet he was in he was marvelously powered within, but but he he yet didn't have a maturity uh, uh, per- that, that that led him to walk perfectly on the outside and this is the mystery of the Holy Spirit in a first phase and a second phase the first phase comes and it brings a glorious graciousness on the inside of us but it's that is that glorious graciousness and that's given, uh, hallelujah, that, 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 that glorious graciousness is given uh, 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 to lead us to a time uh, 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 where we are now operating in a maturity. Now, let me stop and slow down right there because I need to get some things. Uh, I need to hit some things uh, very seriously. Um, the Holy Spirit poured out in us is always the first move of God uh, uh, based on the grace that has been given us. A believer that comes to, a person that comes to believe in God is always going to get the Holy Ghost within. But there are some believers, praise God, that are going to begin to walk, praise God, in such a glory, uh, uh, walk in such a faith, walk in such obedience to God, uh, get to know who they are in Christ in such a way that tremendous exploits is going to be done all around them in the physical, not just by the gift of the Holy Spirit of God uh, uh, to lay hands on the sick, not just by the gift of the Spirit of God to, 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 uh, uh, for deliverance, but by the exousia, uh, by the glory of an authoritative man or woman who now has, has uh, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, uh, now uh, honors and uh, and won't let their words fall to the ground because uh, 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 they have matured in what was in them now, and they're ready now to walk it out uh, in the in, in the natural. The phase two outpouring, which we talked a little bit on the last week, uh, uh, of let's receive this phase one inward, and we've been going now over two thousand years since Christ per- the, the church was planted. Now let's begin to move into the maturity uh, uh, that we might walk in. Praise God! A glory that begins to powerfully affect everything outwardly. Now you you know that this this glory came to the church. On the, in the book of Acts, in the first chapter, in the second chapter of the book of Acts, and we learn that praise God that uh, uh, this was what would, what they called the season of Pentecost, a season of Pentecost. Actually, they called it the day of Pentecost. Now, I'm slowing down a little bit because I need you to get these things. What they called the day of Pentecost was actually, uh, it was the day that, 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 that the Spirit of God was poured out on humanity or poured out on the disciples. Now, as the Spirit of God was poured out on the disciples on that day, men began to, you know, the, uh, if we looked over at chapter uh, uh, 2 and verse 17 
uh, and it said, and it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, your old men shall see dreams and on my servants and my handmaidens, I will pour out of my spirit. I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. This is what took place that we received on that day of Pentecost over 2000 years ago. Now this this is, a, this, is, this, is, this is very important. But here's the thing that we have to understand. Yes, it was the day of Pentecost that we earmark that this was the birthday of the church. This was the birthday of the uh, what we call the Pentecostal church, the church that began to, to operate in the power and in the signs and wonders. Come on now. It started somewhere. Some people don't believe in the power and some people don't believe in the signs and wonders, but it did happen and it started someplace. And here in Acts chapter 2 is where it happened and where it started. Now, I want you to understand something. This happens uh, continuously uh, to people. Some people said, well, it happened, yes, but it doesn't happen anymore. Now, listen, uh, uh, here's what you got to understand about what God did and what God is doing. Yes, it was the day of Pentecost that came to uh, 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 these apostles and disciples and, and, and children of God. Yes, it was the the day of Pentecost that, that this glory came. But that day turned into a season of Pentecost. And this is what many times we don't take into consideration, that the day of Pentecost blossomed into a season of Pentecost. If you would take the days of uh, uh, the feast days and understand uh, the makeup of the seasons, the Pentecost comes and there's a first fruit harvest, but that that season goes all the way to all the way to to the to, to the end of the year what they call the fall harvest and the entire time that it's a season of Pentecost that is taking place a season of the Holy Ghost that is taking place we've lived in a season of Pentecost we've lived in a season not just uh, uh, people who recognize a day hey, amen we've lived in a season of, uh, uh, of Pentecost. Now, this is important because a Pentecost comes not just to, to, to not just to, 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 to endue us with power, but Pentecost is a is a harvest festival. Oh my God, catch that! Pentecost is a harvest festival. Now, I, I, God, I, 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 yeah, 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 a harvest festival. And what does it harvest? It harvests people who believe in God. You remember God said over in St. John chapter 4, he says that uh, the Father seeketh those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, well this is, the, the, the Pentecost comes, the, 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 it comes to, 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 to reap a harvest. The Holy Spirit comes down and the Holy Spirit reaps a harvest uh, and offers it back to God. The Holy Spirit himself comes down bearing gifts, and as the gifts come, it's not so much that he would make people look big or people look like they are uh, 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 something, but he comes down and he, and he, and he, and he works through people uh, uh, to validate what God himself uh, is doing in the earth. The Holy Spirit then begins to, to, to stir up uh, a harvest, and during the Pentecostal season, uh, there is something called a, a first fruit harvest that begins to take place. Mm. A first fruit harvest begins to take place, and 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 and, and the Holy Spirit is the one uh, that's looking to make that first fruit harvest uh, to, to take place. And so, but he's he's reaping those. Now watch this. Now he's reaping those that want to go forward with God. 
The first fruit harvest means that uh, uh, now uh, the Bible says that uh, um, that the, the, the law and the prophets were unto John. But after John, uh, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So John was in the old, and, and John, John uh, the, the Baptist, uh, 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 he, he, he preached, uh, he was uh, one of the prophets, and, and he was actually considered the Old Testament. But after John the Baptist, it says, then grace and truth began to come. And so when grace and truth came, it meant that the old was over, the old was finished, and there was a first fruit group, 12 that turned into 70, that turned into 120, that turns into 3,000. There was a first fruit group now that began to move forward, a first fruit group that wasn't satisfied now with just the things that they had learned in the old, uh, a first fruit group now that had began to say, I'm, we want to move forward um, uh, in what Jesus taught. Jesus uh, taught us how to pray. Uh, uh, Jesus uh, uh, showed us uh, the spirit of God by falling on us. Jesus sh uh, showed us... Mm -hmm. The glory of God uh, that 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 could change could change things instantaneously. Jesus showed us some things. Now there's a mystery here. There's a there's a mystery here uh, uh, that, that that differentiates uh, Babylonian religion versus uh, 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 religion of what we call the remnant church. It's a people who will move forward and a people who will not move forward. There's a there's a uh, uh, a mystery uh, here of the five foolish virgins and the five wise virgins. There's a people that will move forward and a people who won't move forward. Listen. A season of Pentecost uh, is people that have uh, moving out to the uh, uh, Holy Spirit. The Bible says that they that are led by the Spirit, these are the sons and daughters of God. There's a people uh, that's hungry for following uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, it just, they don't just have the Spirit on the inside of themselves, uh, but they have uh, 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 the Spirit uh, uh, that, that's working on the outside. Now you read uh, 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 Acts chapters uh, 2 and verses. Uh, 17 through 21, I believe it, and you study it. But I want to close out with something here that I want you to look at. Mm -hmm. As the church, we believe the first three chapters of the book of Revelations uh, are the seven church ages. The seven church ages. And uh, I, I want to just say something to you about uh, that the Holy Spirit showed me. And that if you don't believe in the seven church ages where the church uh, uh, progressed and Jesus was walking in the midst of his church and Jesus was informing his church. If you don't believe in the seven church ages, then you don't believe in a prophetic word that came from Jesus that touted the beginning of the church all the way to the last church age. And that's paramount. That's paramount because the only thing that gives us the, 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 the impetus, the motivation, the stimulus to move forward is knowing prophetically what God is saying and knowing prophetically what God is doing. Every man comes to Jesus Christ because he, know, he accepts what God has done through Christ. There was one uh, uh, man reading the scripture and another man comes up to him and asks him, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I understand except somebody guide me? See, every man comes to Christ because he has encountered prophetically the word of God and the truthfulness of the word of God. And he says yes to the word of God. And then faith springs forth in that person and they go to that next level. The church ages of the book of Revelations causes us to move from one age all the way to the end of the age. Now this is powerful. And then after the church ages move us in revelation and insight from one age to the end of the age. 
after the Holy Spirit does that, then the Holy Spirit begins to give us new instructions. Let me tell you what I mean by that. The Holy Spirit begins to teach us about uh, things like the seven seals. Now, what are the seven seals? The seals began to say to the church, okay, you've gone through seven church ages, and now you've come to this place. But let me show you something, first of all. And then the Spirit of God, through Jesus giving us a revelation of the open book, the Spirit of God begins to show us the first four seals. The first seal is that Satan has now moved and established himself as a king in the earth. He's riding on a white horse. Well, he did that during the church ages, but you ignored him there. But now he's out there on a, got a crown. He's got a bow or, or a mark that he looks to hit. The second seal says that he's gone forth to make war within the nations. The third seal, Jesus says, look, he's creating pestilence and famine. The fourth seal, Jesus says, look, he's putting them all together in a revised Roman Empire, a new world government. He's putting them all together. The fifth seal, he says, look, he's massacring those that he expects might be the sons and daughters of God. The diaspora of the black man, the holocaust of the Jew. But we don't see it. We don't see the enemies doing, so we're in no hurry. We have no zeal to pray. We have no zeal to stand in the gap because we've rejected the end times move of God that demarcate that said this is the end, and now be, I'm sending you forth, but let me open up a book and show you what's going on, what he's doing. Question. And then I'm going to pray. If God stays still and doesn't move without us, If these seals are correct about Satan's posturing and positioning and empowering himself in the, in the nations, if God doesn't move without us, what's going to take place? Beloved, the scripture says, that God will move. That if he doesn't move, no flesh would be saved. You don't understand that Satan is moving for his own sake. I mean, he's got a group that's deceived, but he's moving for his own purposes, his own sake. Not for the benefit of anyone. Satan, no. His time is sure. The Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2 and 19. The Bible says in the last days it shall come to pass. He says, I will show wonders in the earth above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood, fire, and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord shall come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved or shall be safe. God has provided an ark for us. 
ark of safety. Don't ask me, God, <laughs> apostle, how can God do that? I just know he can. I just know the Bible is full of references where he's brought safety and blessing to his people in the past. And he, I just believe that he's still going to do that. But listen, whether we move or not, whether we come to that place of being able to stand in gap as a holy and a, a royal priesthood over the nations, whether we move or not, Satan is moving. So, Father, I thank you now for what you have begun. I thank you for blessing your people. I thank you for the blessing, O oh God, of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, thank you. Thank you, Spirit of God, for your help. Thank you, Spirit of God, for your deliverance. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. All right, well, God be glorified. God be magnified. God be exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, once again, we just thank, thank and praise God for everything that's been said and done. We thank God for just how that he blessed us on, on this evening, and I hope that there was something said uh, and that blessed you, praise God, as we have taught uh, on this evening. I get kind of excited sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and lose the teacher into becoming a uh, a, a preacher or a treacher or whatever. <laughs> whatever. But this God says to you, amen. God, this I say to you, God loves you. I want you to remember, praise God, us, praise God on uh, uh, every Tuesday night, praise God, in the study and continue to pray for us that we might continue to bring the word of God as God, as we see God uh, uh, delivering it to us. Remember, remember also that we're on on Sunday mornings. Uh, on, uh, uh, on the Sunday morning broadcast at 9 o'clock. That is um, the Ministry of uh, Everlasting Gospel Kingdom Ministries. And, uh, and there will be teaching and preaching the Word of God again also. Remember also on Monday evenings we have uh, with uh, a, call to a call to prayer with Pastor Elaine Brown on at... Uh, uh, 7 p.m. every Monday evenings. You can call in and join that prayer session at 774-267-2796 and whatnot. Remember also on uh, Wednesday nights, we've got uh, Apostle Fred and Melinda Bell that uh, are on uh, teaching, uh, uh, doing the Bible study. Uh, which is uh, which they are also pastors in Georgia. Uh, remember to, to, to come on that session, the powerful teaching team that I know you'll be blessed by uh, as you check in. That number is 339-209-6273. Uh, well, that's the Salteris there. That's not um, Pastors Bell, 617-941-8343. Nine four one eight three four three, and uh, 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 and the reason we bring these ministries up is because they're ministries that we associate with and we we trust uh, trust the word that coming that's coming through them. Apostle um, Pastors Ephraim and Carol Soteres, uh also in Georgia, six p.m. on Thursday evenings, three D Bible study. Uh, number is 339-209-6273. A man of God, woman of God who are, uh, uh, will fight their way through for you uh, no matter what the, the enemy does or, or it's trying to do. Man and woman of God that will fight their way uh, again through for you and whatnot. Uh, Pam and Isaiah join or in North, in North Dakota. They're at this time uh, on somewhat of a hyenas, I think it is, that they're they're, they're, they're not um, they are uh, uh, they're not uh, broadcasting at the moment and whatnot in Jesus name I've got several others praise God that are uh, uh, Bible study on Thursday we've got uh, Sunday evening Bible Sunday uh, Sunday evening prayer meetings and uh, so it, 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 we can get we can get any of those uh, dates and times and, and, and coordinates to you 
uh, uh, as you want to participate in Jesus' name. And uh, once again, we thank God for you and for everything that God has uh, 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 released on this evening. Um, we want to say be blessed uh, like the Lord means for you to be blessed. Uh, I don't... Uh, uh, don't allow, praise God, the enemy to snatch you out of the hands of the Lord. The Bible says that we we shouldn't be we, uh, snatched out of the hands of the Lord. You are the blessed. You'll never be the curse, the head. You'll never be the tail. You are the above. You'll never be beneath. So uh, yield yourself to the Lord and operate in the favor and the blessing that is yours. Shalom. We'll see you the next time in Jesus' name. God bless you. Uh, shalom.